<laughs> Scrappy, if you'll ever do anything else on Love and Hip Hop ever again, release music anything, I will always remember what I just saw. Scrappy was caused so off guard, he had to go and do a puff puff. It was like, <laughs> I can't. Alright, so this is the recap for Love and Hip Hop. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 5, Episode, what, 6? Mothers of All Problems. Uh, mother of All Problems. And so, the episode starts off where it left off, which was with Jocelyn, Mimi, and Chris. Jocelyn, of course, going too far as she normally does. Chris has this whole thing of, even though she's technically a woman, she identifies as being a man. Because she identifies with being a man, she doesn't like the fact that what, that uh, people address her as a woman. And so, Jocelyn being as messy and as Jocelyn as Jocelyn is, which we love, but sometimes it can be like a little too left, she's just like, uh, nah, 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 okay. So the conversation shifts and it goes from their relationship to actually uh, Jocelyn's, I guess, fake or one-sided friendship with Carly Red. And as we know, Carly Red apparently for some reason really liked Jocelyn. Jocelyn clearly just ca thought Carly Red was cool to kick with uh, for a moment and Mimi was just saying you know Jocelyn what's going on what did you do because Carly really feels a certain way about what you did and how you treated her and all of that and Jocelyn's just like look and cause she was like you have something on her she's like I don't have nothing on that girl she needs to stop and I was like okay so was Jocelyn <laughs> So is Jocelyn really putting on, or is there something that she's going to drop, and we just don't know it yet? Because you never know with Jocelyn, you never know. So Jocelyn's just like, okay, so go and co-mingle, enjoy the festivities. Stevie meets up with Chris, and everything seems like it's going well, you know, for the first 10 seconds, it, until Stevie actually starts a conversation. He's just like, oh, so you're very beautiful. And Chris is just like, well, you know, that's kind of insult. I'm like, Chris has to be one of the few women in the world that would be insulted by a man calling her beautiful. I do understand where she's coming from because she... Is me saying she offensive? I forgot. it Because she's... Okay, we're going to go with he. Alright? To make everyone feel better, we're going to go with he. And so, Chris, he feels like, again, he identifies with being a male, but he has no desire to go and do any sexual... um Sexual? Do any changes, gender reassignment changes and so <sighs> Mimi was just like luck I told him the one thing not to say to Chris and that's exactly what he said to Chris so anyway he was just like you make a beautiful couple I'm just like okay CV that's clearly his uh, crutch word because Steven his uh, confessional was just like you know Chris She's, she's interesting. She, God made all of us beautiful type thing. I was like, okay, that just means she's not your type, which is fine because she likes to be called a he. So then, uh, Mimi was just like, well, you know, you need to go and check on your girl Jocelyn because she was talking about some stuff and she was saying things, um, had this confrontation with Carly Red, And she was just like, Lord Jesus, Jocelyn came back to, came back from Hollywood to Atlanta and she's already being as messy as ever. And... That's when Scrap was just like, you know, I don't mean to intrude, but Jocelyn was also saying some stuff about uh, what's currently going on in my relationship. Regardless if it's true or not, she shouldn't be meddling, essentially. And I was like, okay. So we find out that, yes, there is another woman who he's actually has a very close relationship with, and I think even a child with. And so Jocelyn wasn't wrong, but Jocelyn, <laughs> I think we now know who her source is. I... I know she keeps saying the streets, the streets, but we know who else is from the streets besides Jocelyn. And in comes Tammy. T Tommy. Tommy comes in wearing this green borderline lingerie dress. And she's just like, you know what? I came here to confront some people. And so she goes and talks to Jocelyn, because even though Jocelyn's still her girl, it's just like, yeah, so Jocelyn, I went in there. I went into this house and nothing was going on. Jocelyn's just like, I told you not to do anything. That's not my problem that you went and you acted a damn fool. Um, and this is by the time Scrap comes in and she's just talking to Jocelyn and 
Tommy because Scrap figures, you know what? It's just better, it's just safer to go and uh, confront them instead of being the punk and try to avoid them. So I was like, okay, shout out to Scrap for that. And Scrap... Scrap was just like, you know what, you need to stop with the meddling. And Jocelyn was just like, look, I did hear what I heard on the streets, and so if Tommy's my girl, I'm going to go and inform her. Tom, Tommy with an eye roll is just like, yeah, exactly. But she was just like, there's, a, there's something else that you need to know. Word is, out on the streets, that your mother and Stevie... <laughs> Stevie, they used to, they used to play around the playpen together in a sexual manner, but she didn't say it like that, I forgot what word she was trying to use, and Scrap was just like, what? What do you mean? What are you talking about? So it's like, relations, they had sexual relations, it was just, you need to stop it, and at that point, I thought, you know what, Jocelyn, here's the thing, I... Uh, we appreciate the mess as far as the entertainment factor, but there is a point where I do feel like that was taken too far. I get this is a show and all that, but Karen is still Scrap's son. And so to go and say that to him, regardless if he's older than not, that's just a mess. I, I can't even say like if it was for her, because her family life is a mess, so that won't count. So CBJ goes and diffuses the situation because he realizes that... Everyone looks very uncomfortable, well, except for Jocelyn, of course. And we finally see the music video for Church. Gotta go to church. Let bitch go to work. I was just like, okay, so Jocelyn looks good. You know, all the men are just like, because, you know, all the guys are there. Scrappy's there. Scrap is there. Uh, Young Jock is there. Uh, Kirk wasn't there, of course. But, you know what I mean. The main guys were there. And so, they are just like... And I was just looking around, I'm like, okay, so where is everyone else? How does Jocelyn go and get this decent size? It's not a big room, but just like a decent sized room. And I'm like, so where's the people? Clearly, she invited a lot of people and no one came. Like all the women that were on the guest list, aside from Tommy, aside from Mimi, aside from... Uh, weren't there. And look, what the hell? And look, all I have to say is... I actually like the song. The production is good. I'll give her that. The production is good. She sounds good on the track. The music video was good. I'm not even going to say decent. It was actually good. Was it great? No. But did it actually look like it was of high quality? Like they actually used high quality equipment? Yes. So shout out to Jocelyn. I was like, okay. Okay. It took us a while. But finally, because I feel like the original version of Church that we heard was just like okay and a little bit more just instrumentally but look i might have to go and watch that video on youtube i'm not even gonna lie not god i'm going to i know i'm going to and of course Jocelyn is just thanking everyone and it's just like well there's still one more person that needs to show up well in comes dawn dawn of all people dawn of all people only because dawn went and put out stevie and jocelyn's uh the truth on them two seasons ago, or last season, something like that, and about how, oh, they are just renting their place, they don't own it, they don't own anything in there, they're not actually married, all of this stuff. You remember, Don went in on them after um, Jocelyn broke it off with Don, as far as their friendship, as far as her being her manager, and so I'm wondering, <laughs> Jocelyn's really on this fake kumbaya let's be friends let's pretend like i never did you wrong type of tip that's i'm sorry i love jocelyn but i don't know if i can trust someone like that that's that willing and that easy just be like okay yeah we're all cool i don't have a problem with you so you shouldn't have a problem with me we're all cool no i feel like that's someone that's just ready to go and stab you in the back not even in the back in the face if they have the chance to dawn though stevie was pissed stevie had this look of I'm going to get this. I'm going to get her. Mimi was just like, of all people, Jocelyn going and being friends with Dawn again? I don't know who this Jocelyn is, but okay. Just like, And then Tommy comes rolling back in because apparently Dawn was saying some stuff about Tommy in the streets. And so Tommy wasn't having it. So it wasn't Jocelyn that Tommy was going to confront, at least at this time. I'm not sure if even on the show necessarily that... They confront each other, maybe on the reunion. But what I do know is that Tommy was trying to get at uh, 
Dawn, originally she was trying to hold herself back, and then security, everyone else, held her back, and then that's when we see her spit, and do all this stuff, and they're just like, oh, 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 and Scrap was happy because, of course, Scrap was irritated with Jocelyn, so he didn't have a problem with, uh, taking Bambi out, and apparently, what's, apparently, Tammy's, Waka Flocka, has his cousin, his friend, who he's known for nine years, so it's like his cousin, and he sets up the cousin on a date with Bambi. And he has a couple of baby mamas, of course, a couple of kids, and, uh, but he seems relatively level-headed, and so that's why was, Bambi was just like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna vet him out. I'm gonna do this. It was like, oh, they both ordered chicken and waffles. She got there first. She ordered, and then he ordered. It's like, oh, they're eating the same thing. Oh, they seem like really two cool people. I'm just like, okay, we'll see how long this lasts. He better run. There's a lot of drama there. He better run. If he knows what's good for him, he better run. And then the guys meet up. The guys as in Stevie J, Scrap, and Scrap's brother. And Scrap's brother is very outspoken. But that's not a bad thing for this show. I, I want to make that very clear. That's not a bad thing for this show because I feel like he's just watching and waiting whenever he has an opportunity. He's just like, look, we need to debt this. And I feel like... I feel like he's actually really level-headed and just looking at all the foolery that's going on. It's just like, this is a joke. This needs to stop. Why does this actually happen? I'll tell you why. Because he signed up for Love and Hip Hop. As soon as you sign up for something like Love and Hip Hop, things go crazy. Because they're both just trying to talk to their aunt, Stevie J, about Jocelyn and to get her under control. And we can use the word get her under control only because it's Jocelyn. And we know Jocelyn does a lot sometimes. And so we can use that type of rhetoric. Rashida and her mom, Rashida is happy because except for her stepdaughter, everyone else has stepped their game up and is actually taking things seriously and actually putting in work at her store. And her mom was just like, you know what? I refuse to go and talk to Mama D. I refuse to go and talk with Mama D. Because Rashida is like, I made up with Scrap and it was never really an issue. Of course, he was just upset about the fact that he wasn't informed or know knew about us not being there. And, of course, I can take that. Understand that. Kirk made up with him. We're good on that front. But now, and even with Mama D, but now you have to go and make go with Mama D. She was just like, I refuse. She disrespected you. Then she disrespected me. Then she disrespected our business. <laughs> nope. No, no. After that, we see Mama D and Curtis in the bed. I'm like, whose room is this? Whose room is this? First off, this is giving me 1970s. Not even 80s. 1970s decor. I'm like, and they're going in there making now and she's rubbing up on him. I think she might have also been playing with his John. And I'm just, I'm, 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 no. I didn't want to see any of that. Mama D doesn't look bad by any means. But I, I still didn't want to see any of that. I was just like, <laughs> Let's get the geriatric. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, and her complaint is he actually is working. He has two jobs or he lost two jobs, Curtis. And uh, he's not paying any bills right now. And then he's also not giving her any sex. And they're just like, where's the lube? Where's the lube? I'm like, what type of scene is this? What type of scene is this? This feels like the most manufactured Mama D scene I've ever seen in life. There was nothing authentic about that scene. Do I think that she was authentically mad? Yes, but the whole setup, that was corny. That was corny. I'm disappointed. And then we have Tammy. She's with, uh, she's with Rashida. She's with their friend Shad and uh, Deb. And right now they're just talking about what's currently going on with Bambi potentially dating uh, Waka Flocka's pseudo-cousin and Deb's not having it because he knows that Bambi comes with a lot of drama and she doesn't want her um, want her pseudo-nephew to have to deal with that. Rashida's is just like, you know what? I know this is probably information I should be giving to my actual cousin Scrap, but Scrappy, but I can't, I, I don't want, no, I'm not going to go and get in the middle of any of, no, this is not going to happen. But, Miss Deb, I need your help because, can you go and talk to my mom? Well, I'm going to 
go and sneak my mom and Scrap's gonna bring his mom and we're gonna go and try to hash things out because it's ridiculous that they're at odds right now. It really is. And so she was like, okay, you know, I don't see the crazy and the cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo when I go and talk to Mama D. So yeah, we'll be fine. And it was funny because <laughs> Rashida goes in and reenacts what Mama D did with the whole bringing up the nest, well, the hay for the nest and the straw and saying, oh, you need to lay eggs and you rotten eggs and all this stuff. And it was a lot. It, it was a lot, man. It was, why is my skin breaking out again? Look at this, look at this. And, um, what's her name? So Jocelyn is talking with Stevie J, and Jocelyn, because, of course, Jocelyn's in her penthouse. She's in her penthouse because she doesn't live with Stevie J at this moment right now. And Stevie is just like, look, Jocelyn, you need to do better. You came back from L.A. to Love and <laughs> I mean, to Atlanta. No, let's pretend like we're not on the show. Uh, to Love and Hip Hop, just to go and be messy. Really? Really? She was just like, look, if I found some information and I'm just relaying it, that's what I'm doing. I'm not apologizing to anyone. I didn't do anything wrong. So if they have a problem with me, they're going to have a problem with me forever. And if this isn't an argument, then we're done. Then I'm done. Bye. It's Jocelyn, that's all I have to say. So Rashida goes, brings her mom to this luncheon, and Deb's there, and she's just like, oh, okay, what's going on? And I think they initially start the conversation of, well, no, it doesn't really matter what happened there, because next thing you know, you have Mama D with Scrappy and Curtis all coming together. <laughs> Mama D and Curtis are in matching black outfits, and... <laughs> Like going to someone's wake slash party. <laughs> and Oh yeah, I did skip something. So Scrap and his family all went to see uh their cousin who died and will of course go to his burial site and KK actually showed up. Originally they didn't think she was gonna show up, but she actually showed up and that was really important because she's never been there ever since he died. So that was emotional. The reason why I jumped right, uh, not actually fast forward, but just talking about it is because, man, I was actually feeling bad because she was just crying and crying because she was so hurt. And then, of course, they started to cry. That was emotional. That was real. Shout out to Love and Hip Hop for some, these last two scenes were definitely real. <laughs> Woo! And I'm laughing only because of what happened next. So now it's time for Mama D and, and Rashida's mom to go back and forth. So but essentially, Rashida's just like, you know, everyone else has made up with the exception of you two. And so we wanted Deb to be here because Deb makes a lot of sense. She has a certain presence. So that's why we want her here. And it was interesting because here's how Deb also actually said that before they even came in there, that, well, you know, it wasn't necessary for them to be there because I guess it was always planned that Deb was going to be there and so she could vouch and do whatever legal thing she needed to do to help Scrap out. So I guess it wasn't as serious as we thought it was, but it was just about overall support. And the thing was that uh, Rashida's mom feels disrespected. She's like, what the heck is wrong with Mama D? Mama D brings out this feather, and it's just like, all oh, these cuckoo birds, cuckoo birds, and Rashida's mom's like, what is this chick doing some voodoo stuff? What is wrong with her? She's insane. And, and Deb is just so taken aback, because she's like, what the hell is wrong with this chick? I, this is not the person who I thought I knew. What is wrong with her? Mama D using the feather as sage. And then Curtis goes and... Whoa, what's wrong with my voice? Because Scrap was trying to stop her, and she was like, no, no. This is like, oh. And Kurt, <laughs> Curtis and Scrap just like, oh, Lord Jesus, why is she doing this now? Why now? <laughs> Poor Scrap. This is like, Mom, you need prayer. And she was just like, look, you need to stop talking. And so <laughs> Curtis goes and says, <laughs> well, you know, I apologize because, you know, 
she's had some alcohol. She's been a little drunk lately. So, you know, I haven't been paying rent and that's been stressing her out. <laughs> she's just like, why are you putting my business out there? Why are you saying this? Why are you saying that? If you're gonna go and say that, no, I ain't gonna say that you can't get hard, that you can't get it up, and that you didn't have lubrication, and then here comes Scrap out of nowhere with his blue inhaler. He's just like, whoa, what did she say? It's just like, what? I feel so bad, so bad for him. And Devin's like, I understand. I finally understand. Scrap is just sexually frustrated. I mean, no, I mean, De uh. What's her name? Mama D is just sexually frustrated, and that's why she's acting a damn fool. And the whole premise was, why'd you come to Rishi's uh, shop, place of business, and do what you did? That was messed up. And it's like, your son even told you not to go meddle in, uh, your, in my business, in uh, his affairs, and you went and you did it anyway. And so then, Deb goes and divulges information regarding the fact that That scr uh, what do you call it? That Bambi is dating Waka Flocka's cousin. And so then he looks to Rashida, because Rashida's mom just gave it away. And he looks to Rashida's like, oh, so did you know about this? And she was just like, yeah, I did. But at the end of the day, I didn't feel like it was my place to go and say anything because... X, Y, and Z, and at that point, he was just over it. Mama D was just like, see, they ain't loyal, they ain't with the fam, they're supposed to be cuz, they're supposed to be good. Um, <laughs> no, this is a mess. Please like, comment, subscribe. That ending, though. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Come back next week.